Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, December 29th, 2016. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Vincentians will on Tuesday, 14 February 2017, witness the opening and commencement of operations at the Argyle International Airport. Announcing the long-awaited news on radio earlier today, Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonzalez said the day of love or Valentine's Day will see a momentous celebration among all Vincentians who have been looking forward to an opening date of the airport for the longest while. He said the relevant personnel are making arrangements to have chartered flights land at the airport for the special occasion. Give them this good news. Very well. The, the, I was, I know social media was hinting at it. And, and yesterday, afternoon and evening at a meeting with all the relevant stakeholders to make sure that February the 14th is a go. And I'm told, a journalist called me this morning, told me that social media is a buzz. Mm -hmm. Even, just as I was having my coffee, which is very early, that social media is a buzz, that it's February the 14th and the journalist wanted confirmation. So I had to uh, to confirm it. And Beach is the point man dealing with the, the charters who coming in for that day and so on and so forth. But I'm hoping that Vincent and overseas could help themselves, business people, etc. They, they can organize charters. You know, it's, it's a... Uh, we are open for business. The Prime Minister took the opportunity to also highlight various projects and infrastructural work slated to begin in the new year. From around March, we will see the, the, the feeder road and um, the village road program starting with the Kuwaiti money and then after that with the open fund money. Um, in addition to the general repairs which we normally do. Yes. Um, uh, the, I got the information yesterday that the developers from from um, uh, Canada down at um, Mountain People's Hope. They want to break long in January. They're trying to get all the relevant partners to come for that particular time. They would have come a little earlier in January, around the 3rd. But they, they can't get passages for everybody. Okay. Whom they're bringing. So later, maybe the 16, 17, something like that. The Prime Minister also made mention of his government's commitment in seeing proper solutions come about in solving issues plaguing employers and workers at both the Buckingham Bay Resort and the St. Vincent Shipyard Limited. Uh, yesterday I was talking to Brian Glasgow, who is the interim receiver for Buckingham okay. Resort, and um, he brought me up to date as to what is happening, so I'm, I'm hopeful that we see some movements there. The matters are at such a delicate stage that I don't want to say more. Just just to report that I am I'm very much in touch with him and so too um, the other ministers in, including um Sabot and Camilo. Yesterday I asked Mr Edwards, the Director General of Finance and Planning, about the meeting which he had arranged to have with the, the people on Dotley Hall. Sometimes today is the meeting. Um, there's some matters which have to be dealt with quite seriously there. You know, he's the chairman of the company in in which, or the state company in which the Ashley Hall Marina is lodged. Okay. So that, and, and that, is, that entity which has the, the, the lease arrangement with the defense trailer. Authorities at the Leeward Island Airlines Pilots Association, LIALPER, say they are awaiting information on measures to be taken by the Leeward Islands Air Transport, LIAT, against the passenger who caused the disruption and cancellation of a flight destined from St. Vincent on December 13, 2016, following the passenger's allegation of detecting the smell of alcohol on one of its pilots. Highlighting various standing procedures of LIAT in dealing with disruptive passengers, 
The Ed's Pilots Association, the ALPA, in a press release dated today, Thursday, December 29th, expressed its confidence that Liet will deal with the situation no differently than they have done in the past. In making reference to Liet's recent press release where the company strongly refuted the allegations brought against the pilot, the Pilots Association thanked the company for clearing the air and letting the public know that the pilot was completely innocent. Stating that the organization never doubted that the pilot was innocent of the mischievous allegation, the association, Lialpa, stated that it will do whatever is necessary to protect the pilot's reputation and will explore all avenues to do so. Reiterating its regret for the disruption and subsequent cancellation of the set flight, Lialpa reassured the traveling public that they remain committed and dedicated to serving them at the highest professional and safety levels. Described as one of the most brutal crimes taking place in the world currently, human trafficking continues to plague numerous nations around the world as more and more persons face the risk of being exploited. Speaking at the annual Christmas Crime Prevention Exhibition held recently, Station Sergeant Junior Sergeant attached to the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Unit at TIPU within the RSVG Police Force said the global fight in eradicating the crime continues with the realization that human trafficking is indeed a crime against humanity. Human trafficking is the second most lucrative crime, second only to drug trafficking. It's a crime where the criminals, the human traffickers, they make approximately nine to 25 billion US dollars annually from exploiting human beings. They would force their victims into prostitution. They would force them to beg on the streets. They would force them to fight as ch child soldiers in wars. Uh, they would even remove their kidneys. It's a crime that must be stamped out, human trafficking. Um, it doesn't belong in this universe. It's a crime against humanity. It's a crime against persons' human rights. And we at the Anti-Trafficking Forces Unit, we are doing all that we can to stamp out human trafficking. Formed in 2012, the ATIPU at TIPU, according to Simmons, remains committed to its mandate of investigating and prosecuting any known cases of human trafficking in SVG. Sensitize the general public about human trafficking to train law enforcement officials and other public officers and civilians um, about human trafficking. We also have to prepare, prepare quarterly and annual reports to the National Task Force against trafficking, which is chaired by the Honorable Prime Minister. Um, so far, in our country, we have had one official report of human trafficking where we would have arrested and charged of intention um, for trafficking. The matter was taken to court, but it was later withdrawn by the, by the prosecution. But you know, we are not deterred by that. We are still continuing the fight to ensure that we root out human trafficking wherever it exists. Station Sergeant Simmons further urged the general public to continue to work in collaboration with the RSVG police force as they strive to stomp out all forms of crime in the country. Every country, every government, every law enforcement agency, every NGO, we are pooling the resources together to ensure that the score of human trafficking is diminish or extinguish from our universe. So um, for this Christmas and the, the New Year, we want to urge the, the general public to cooperate with the police, cooperate with us. If you know of anyone who is a victim of trafficking or you hear anything, please contact the trafficking unit. We are located at the Kittles Police Station and you can get us there at telephone number 4561750 or via email at svgantitraffickingunit at gmail.com. A Camden Park family is mourning the death of a beloved relative. 34-year-old Kamari Neptune 
a driver and chauffeur of the South Leeward community was gunned down in the wee hours this morning in the Redemption Shops area. According to reports, the deceased spent the night with his girlfriend Ayasha Evans, with whom he has two children, and upon leaving Evans' home going into his vehicle, he was approached by an individual dressed in all black. Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of crimes, Frankie Joseph, said several shots were fired upon Neptune. It is alleged that, that Mr. Neptune was in his vehicle. He went into his vehicle and a gunman approached the vehicle and said he discharged approximately two, two shots from all reports. And uh, as a result of that, the, the deceased opened his vehicle door and ran and the, the, um, the, the gunman ran after him. However, he escaped and no one was able to, to um, identify him at that time. We are working on, on, on leads. We have information that we are working on, but then we cannot disclose that information at this time. ACP Joseph expresses concern with the continued rising crime rate and said the police will take the necessary measures to clamp down on criminals and their activities here. It continues to rise in spite of all that we are doing because we have, we have literally 24 hours, we have 24 hours patrol. We have, we have officers who are not who are literally just getting a few hours rest and, and up and about all the time. And in spite of all that, we are still having, having these. So it tells us that, that, that people are bent on, on committing these crimes. And they are saying to us that you have to catch us because it's the only how we are not going to get involved in, in these crimes. We are still going to up that, that patrol because we know that this weekend is going to be a very busy weekend. Um, this is the old year's, new year's weekend and um, we are going to step up even more with our, with our patrols and our, our stop and search. And, and we are hoping that, that we can go through the rest of the year without any incident. SVGTV News team visited the home of the latest homicide victim, Kamari Neptune, earlier today, but his family was too distraught to speak to our news team. Some residents, however, took the opportunity to express how shocked they were upon hearing the news of the death of Neptune, who they say was much loved and admired. I've known Cam quite a good while because I taught all his children in preschool. They came to Faith Temple Preschool. Cam is a very quiet, cold going guy. The way I heard how he died, it kind of shocking to me. And I trust and hope that um, justice would be prevailed for him. Cool for Quiet for that's all right. Very much surprised mm -hmm. of what I heard. And he was the alright guy. No, and Cam is the alright person. That's what I always really know about Cam. Mm -hmm. uh, he was friendly and everything like that. But this morning was a sad news um, to everybody around the neighborhood to hear that happen. The police here are investigating the death of 54 year old Ralph Garrick of Loman Swingwood. Garrick, a farmer by profession, reportedly sustained a punch to his face from fellow villager, 63-year-old Augustine Glasgow, which reports state left him unconscious. According to the police, the issue stemmed from an altercation dating back to Independence Day, where it was reported that Glasgow jokingly exchanged words with the now-deceased Garrick. Not finding the humor in Glasgow's comments, Garrick expressed his disapproval, leading to an altercation between both men. The blow Garrick sustained left him unconscious and he was admitted to the intensive care unit at the Milton Cater Memorial Hospital. He was a patient there up until yesterday, December the 28th, when he died. He was rushed to the Milton Cater Memorial Hospital where he went into intensive care how unit. Was he, how was he um, injured? What, what type of injury? Well, allegedly he was he was struck from behind and he fell forward on his face and as a result of that he 
was rushed to the Middleton Kato Memorial Hospital. He was in intensive care unit. And uh, as a result of that, yesterday afternoon, he succumbed to those in injuries. The investigation was, was ongoing, and we actually was awaiting, waiting to see whether or not Mr. Gary could have recovered from intensive care unit. And uh, unfortunately, he did not. Um, so the police now will be proceeding <coughs> their investigation, and Mr. Garrick will be arrested for manslaughter. Just days before the start of a new year, a call has been made for Vincentians to continue good nutritional practices to ensure a healthy SVG for 2017 and beyond. The call comes from senior nutritionist in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Joyce Bergen, as she spoke with SVG TV on how the public could improve and maintain their health for the new year. Bergen identifies some of the food groups which she believes Vincentians should increase their intake of and advise persons who will be engaged in the upcoming New Year celebrations to be moderate with their alcohol consumption. We want you to increase your consumption of fruits, vegetables, and legumes especially, because we know these are the three food groups that we sometimes tend to not eat enough from. We know that an individual can have up to five servings of fruits in one day and up to three servings of vegetables and two or more servings of legumes. And this will ensure that they have enough bulk in their system so that their bodies do not retain too much calories basically on a day-to-day -day basis. We want people to have a moderate consumption of fats and oils as well as alcohol, sugar, and salt. Bergen also advised persons with diabetes to also be moderate with their alcohol consumption and the food they eat. We also know that this is a time when we have diabetics and hypertensive, they're going to be with members of the family and we're going to have family gatherings and there's going to be a lot of food and a lot of drink and to some extent we're going to have alcohol. We want you to be moderate in your alcohol consumption. If you know you have diabetes and you're going to have maybe a glass of wine or whatever, you know that you're going to replace a staple food with that glass of wine. So you don't have a big plate of food and then you go and you have that wine or whatever because you're going to spike your blood sugar because the alcohol is absorbed much more easily and we know that it gives calories and it is going to head straight to your bloodstream and it's going to impact your blood sugar levels. So be moderate in your alcohol consumption, be sensible. You have the guidelines, you would have gotten it from your healthcare provider and so you know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do with your diabetes. The nutritionist says persons suffering with hypertension should also be careful with the consumption of alcohol as it could have disastrous effects on their health if overconsumed. It's the same thing for those persons with hypertension. Don't stop taking your medication. You have to take your medication. And if you are not allowed to take alcohol, we urge you to stay away from alcohol. There are other things you can use and celebrate. You can have the non-alcoholic wines, etc. that during your celebrations so that you can enjoy and a drink with the rest of the family. Because you know that while you may think you are okay, it only takes sometimes one drink to trip you over and send you into a tailspin with complications for your hypertension. And we know once you have hypertension, you're going to be impacting your heart also and some other organs in your body. And so we urge you to be careful with what you eat. Persons who have other chronic diseases, stick to your diets, be moderate in what you can use, and continue to take care of yourselves for the rest of 2016 so that you can be healthy and ready to go in 2017. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force Fire Department is calling on Vincentians to exercise caution as the nation enters the season known as the bushfire season. The call comes as the department was called in to extinguish a bushfire in the Kittles area earlier today. A representative of the department stated that during this season, there would be a prevalence of dried grass, which could easily facilitate fires, which could have disastrous effects. Persons who may be doing land clearing are also advised to burn the refuse in small heaps, rather than trying to burn the entire area, which could lead to the fire getting out of control. 
Persons using fire to clear land was also advised to never do so alone and ensure that there is some extinguishing agents on hand to control the fire.